Hi guys, Greg at Panels R Us. Today I'm going to be building a small tune to sign in the form of a matrix, which is going to be four P5 panels. It's going to be too wide, too tall, uh, a nice tiny little build to get you started and an introduction to P5s. We're going to run it using a Raspberry Pi with a Hanson Electronics Pi hat. So it's a nice little self-contained project, perfect for going outside. Now you will need to build some sort of enclosure to put this in, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Today we're just going to talk about the electronics and a small build of joining the panels together. First of all, I'm going to talk through the components that we're going to use to put it together. First up, of course, we have the P5 panels. So these are LED uh, pixel matrices. They are 32 pixels tall by 64 wide. And we're going to join four of them together, as I said. Now the panels themselves come with power cables. So you get one power cable per two panels. And that's a Y cable. So that will do you uh, for your two panels. So you get two of those. And you also get a short IDC data cable uh, to go with your panels. Uh, these are designed for joining them together, but we're going to mount them in such a way today that we can use them to connect to the Pi as well. The last thing you get with your panels is um, these magnetic mounts, which screw into the back of the panels. Uh, you get four per panel and they're designed to mount the panels onto something ferrous or something metallic so that you can just stick it on. We're not going to use these today, so I'm going to put them to one side. Now, also on the workbench, we've got some mountings. So these are 3D printed mountings available from the store. We've got some to go around the edge and we've got another couple to go in the middle. This one is designed for a Raspberry Pi and this one for a Falcon F8 power distro uh, that we're going to be used to, to power everything up and give us nice fuses and whatnot. Now we've got here the brains of the operation. This is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a Model 3B Plus, and that's going to do us fine for today's build. It's got more than enough power for us. It runs quite cool, so we don't have to worry about additional ventilation or anything like that. And for troubleshooting, if we have trouble, we've got USB ports we can plug a keyboard into and HDMI that we can plug a monitor into so that we can see what's going on. But I'm sure we're not going to need that. Now we've also got an SD card. Uh, this one is a 16 gig and that's going to give us some space to run Falcon Pi Player and also to store our sequences that we're going to put onto the Pi uh, to show to our audience. Now we've got the Hanson Electronics uh, Pi hat. This is going to plug onto the top of the Pi using the 40 pin GPIO ports. Uh, and it gives us three outputs for panels and also five volts in, which not only powers the hat, but it powers the Raspberry Pi as well. So we can then connect directly to that and not worry about using the micro USB on the Pi itself. We've then got the Falcon F8 power distro. It works with either 5 or 12 volts. Today we're going to be using 5 volts because all the panels are 5 volts, the Pi is 5 volts and so on. So we'll feed it power in here from our power supply which is our Meanwell LRS355, uh, a five volt version. We'll use that. We'll supply power from there to the inputs on the F8 distro. And then via the fused outputs, we're gonna to run to the panels and to the Pi. Last but not least, we've got a, a spare couple of cables. We've got the Meanwell power supply and I've got a short ethernet cable. Now, I'll be using a small hub today to connect my laptop PC that we'll use later on uh, to configure FPP 
and we'll just plug that into the hub and then we'll plug the Pi into the hub as well to get it up and running. Once it's configured it can go onto Wi-Fi or you can run a long Ethernet cable out if you want, if you want to or if you don't want either you can always wander backwards and forwards with an SD card and plug it in and set it on its way. The only tools that we're going to need for today are we're going to have a multimeter so we can just double check that the power supply is running 5 volts before we plug it in and we've got a few screwdrivers uh, nothing that you shouldn't already have in a toolbox anywhere and nothing, uh, nothing extreme. Let's start by assembling the panels together. So I'm putting them out and you'll notice on the back that they've got arrows for orientation. Now it's important that we keep the arrows all pointing the same direction and ideally they should be pointing up uh, which in this case is going to be away from me. There we go, there's our four panels. And I'm going to start by connecting up the side brackets uh, to join the edges together. Now the side brackets here have got little holes in them to accommodate the lugs on the back of the panels to keep them all in a nice straight uh, manner. There we go, so we just sit it on top and it will screw straight in. That's the sides done and now we're going to use one of our four-way mounts for the centre. Now for this build I'm going to use the, the Falcon F8 mount from our store um, because that's going to hold the power distro nicely in the middle as well as holding the four panels together. So that's the, the F8 mounted. I'm now going to install the Raspberry Pi mount. Again this is designed as a four-way mount but it'll, do, it'll fit quite happily onto the centre pair of threaded uh, holes so that we can uh, install the Raspberry Pi nice and close to the data in on the panels. And there we go, that's now in place as well. So we can now start fitting at the hardware. So I'm going to start with the Raspberry Pi and that will fit straight onto the mount. There we go, that's held in position. And then we have a couple of self-tapping screws ready to go. And we go straight in just to hold it down. There we go, that's the Pi mounted. We can then install the Hanson Pi hat directly onto the GPIO. There we go. And that's now sat in place as well. Moving on to the Falcon power distro. That will sit, there we go, straight onto the top there. And again, a couple of self-tappers uh, will hold it in place. Okay, so we've got Pi and, and the Falcon Distro in place. We can now start some of the wiring. The power cables that come with the P5s have spade connectors on the front by default. Because we're going to be using a Falcon F8 Distro, I've done a blue Peter and here's some we made earlier. So I've taken the spades off and replaced them with the power connectors from the F8. There 
Here we go, one, two, and three. And same again for the other side. And that's the power sorted for the panels. Well now, I've got a short piece of cable now ready to power the handsome board and therefore the Pi. So again, a short piece of wire rated for, the Pi uses about three amps, so cable rated a good five amps should be fine. The fuse on the F8 is also rated for five amps, so we're not gonna have any dramas there. Now I'm paying attention to the color order. Uh, the five volts is labeled clearly on the board and is nearest me. And ground. Okay. Equally labelled. There we go, that's those. And again, then the power cable can come round and straight into the F8. So that's the power from the distro done. We can now move towards data and using the four data cables that came with the panels. First of all, I'm going to join the panels together in the middle. These are going to daisy chain two panels. There we go, so top row. There we go, and done. That's those two. And that leaves us two data cables that we can connect to the Raspberry Pi and the data in on these panels. Now the Hansen board has three outputs and we're going to be using two of them today two for the top row of panels and two for the bottom row of panels. Now you don't have to use the outputs in the order on the board. When we set it up in FPP, it will become clear that we can adjust it. Now because we're using the very short cables that came with the panels, um, you can of course get longer ones from the store if you want them, but I'm being a bit, uh, keeping it nice and simple today. So I'm gonna take the cable from the top one and the only port that will reach is port three. So that's just into port three. And then from the second section, we'll, we can reach port two. So I'll go for ports two and three. There we go. So that's the data side complete. All that's left now is to connect the power to make the whole thing go. So here we've got the Meanwell power supply. Now. I like using a mean well because uh, they've got very good protection circuitry in there. So if something were to go wrong uh, between the, on the power supply or between the power supply and the F8, you're not gonna have any dramas. The power supply will just shut down. So let's get that ready. And again, I've got another short piece of power cable ready uh, to power the F8 and everything, therefore everything else. Now the ports are clearly labeled positive and negative. So I'm just gonna connect the cable into the positive. And the negative, or five volts and, and ground as it's referred to. Now, before I go any further, I just wanna make sure that we are getting five volts out of the power supply uh, and not something else. So I'm just gonna power it up and we'll have a look. Okay, so I've put, put the power on and we can see the green light now on the output to say that there's power available. So using my trusty multimeter, I'm gonna set it to 20 volts at DC. And I'm just gonna probe the plus and negative on the V outputs. And the output is currently showing us as 5.02 volts. Now that's fine, that's well within tolerance. Uh, anywhere between about 4.9 and 5.25 volts uh, is absolutely fine for these, so 
no dramas at all with 5.02. Right, we'll turn it off again and we'll get it connected. So the power light is now out, so we're good to go ahead and connect up the ground and volts to the F8. So again, they're clearly labeled as V for volts or power in um, for positive and ground for zero volts or ground. There we go. So they're in. We'll just screw those up tight. And there we go, that concludes uh, the connectivity for that side. So we've got our power going to the F8s, which is then distributing to the four panels and the Raspberry Pi and hat. We've got data connected from the Raspberry Pi hat to the inputs on the first two panels and daisy chains to the next two panels. And that concludes our wiring. I'm just gonna plug it in, make sure we get some signs of life and then we're done for part one. Okay, so I plugged it in. We've got power on light on the power supply, and I can see that we've got power lights on the F8 distro, so that's good, we've got power there. And looking at the end of the Raspberry Pi, I can see that we've got a power light there as well. So everything's got juice. Next step at configuring FPP. If you wanna go and get a cup of tea, now's a good time to pause. Uh, and before we move on to part two.